In this video, we're going to be designing an effective and efficient filtration schedule for a small swimming pool using a Hayward variable speed super pump. This is the model SP2603 VSP, that's the 230 volt application. And we also have a Hayward 150 square foot cartridge filter that we're going to be using. Now the uh, plumbing system for this setup is a single inch and a half suction line and a single inch and a half pressure line. We'll be monitoring the flow rate through this digital flow meter here. So what this is simulating here is a pretty simple plumbing system. You know, this isn't going to be a big dynamic swimming pool. This is gonna be an above ground swimming pool or a smaller swimming pool in general. And that's why you would only have a single inch and a half suction line and a single inch and a half pressure line. Now, what you want to realize as we're designing this schedule is that you can't really just set one speed and walk away. That's not dynamic at all. Swimming pools need periods of time with, you know, different levels of filtration or different amounts of filtration. And we're going to go over that here. So first things first, we're approximating a 12 by 24 foot swimming pool. Now this one has an average depth of five feet, which means it probably has a deep end about six feet deep or so. So that gives us an approximate calculation of 10,800 gallons for this swimming pool. So our next step is to determine the filtration goal. And that would be 32,400 gallons per day. And you might be wondering, well, why that number? Well, that number represents approximately 95% of all of the water in the pool being filtered at least one time. If you only filtered 10,800 gallons in a day, you wouldn't actually get all of the water in your pool. You would only get, you know, maybe about 63% or so. And on the second turnover of your pool volume, you would get about 86%. And on the third turnover is when you achieve approximately 95% of all in the water in your swimming pool. And that should be recognized to be a minimum value, not a maximum value. And you certainly can exceed that value and that would do nothing but benefit you further. But to establish a minimum filtration goal, we're going to go with 32,400 gallons or about 95% of all of the water in the pool being filtered every day. Now I mentioned before that there needs to be a dynamic schedule and there is, and I'm going to show you how using a dynamic schedule can get you the maximum value in terms of your filtration quality while experiencing a minimum value in terms of cost. So the timer setup that we're going to use for this pump here, is going to be that there's going to be four different tiers to it and the first tier is the one that's going to run during the middle of the day now i've set this up from 9 a.m to 9 p.m so it's basically all day long during the day at only 750 rpm and the reason that i've done that is where i live probably where you live too during the middle of the day there's kind of like a premium charge for electricity so what you want to do is when the premium charge exists, you want to run the pump at the lowest possible RPM. That's very significant because when we get towards the higher RPM values, you're going to notice it's very disproportionate. The amount of power the pump consumes grows greatly while the flow that you get from that increased power consumption does not grow greatly. So that's why during the middle of the day, when the power rates are highest, I want to have my pump scheduled to be running the lowest RPM of my schedule. So that's 12 hours there at 750 RPM. At 9 PM, I want the pump to change to 1500 RPM. It's been a long time. It's been running at very low RPM and I want it to be, you know, a little bit higher for a bit, but the power is still at a small premium. So at 1 AM, timer three comes on and for two hours in the middle of the night when it's absolute cheapest for power, I'm going to be running my highest speed schedule. Now notice it's not 3,450 RPM, which would be the maximum speed of a pump, this pump in, in particular. When you turn down the RPM value, even a small amount from the maximum, you'll lose a little bit of the flow value, but the power consumption drops drastically. It's a non-linear drop. So you definitely want to take advantage of that by not running the absolute maximum speed. So my low, medium and high speeds aren't actually the very highest. 
and getting to timer four here. Again, from 3 a.m. to 9 a.m., I'm gonna be running again at 1500 RPM. So it's only three speeds total, but I've got it split up over you know, uh, four timers just to be a little bit more dynamic, a little bit better for the quality of the filtration. Now what I'm gonna show you next is the amount of flow that you can get for these different RPM values. It is very significant to note that every swimming pool system is unique. This is what my system gets. Your system will get different values, but this gives us a starting point for comparison. So as you can see at 750, we're at just under 15 gallons per minute. 1500 is about 30 gallons per minute and 2750 is about 56 gallons per minute. With these values, you're going to see 10,600 gallons, 18,000 gallons, and 6,700 gallons, totaling 35, 532. Now, as you remember, our goal was only 32,000 as the minimum, so we've met and exceeded that value with our dynamic schedule. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at those RPM values right now. So there we are at 750 RPM. And 14.7, I've got it at 14.8. A little bit of fluctuation there. And we've got that at 14.8. So let's jump up to 1500 RPM. And just a shade over 30. And again to 2750. So just over 56. Now look at the power consumption up here. That would be the top right corner that you're looking at. About 653 watts. Which as you can see jumping ahead is our next part of this calculation. Right here. So when we're running at this high speed, we're using quite a bit of power. Quite a bit of power consumption per hour. Let's take a look at those other speeds again. Back down to 1500. Let's take a look at our power consumption here. Hundred and twenty seven and change. Hundred and twenty seven watts per hour. Quite a big difference and power as you can see. And that's very interesting because at 653 watts per hour, we got 56 gallons per minute. But you cut that wattage way down to 127 watts per hour, we're still getting a shade over 30 gallons per minute. That's, that's how this works. The more you turn it down, the more you save. You know, there's a point of diminishing returns because you, you need the pump to be able to overcome the resistance to flow. And you can determine that if you have a flow meter. Like, let's take a look at this really low RPM here, 750. It's so low, it's so quiet, you wouldn't even know if you're moving any water unless you had a flow meter. You definitely want a flow meter. I can see that we're moving quite a bit of water here, about 14.8 gallons per minute. But look at that power consumption, right around 30 watts. You know, half of a 60 watt light bulb, that's bananas, that's so little power, it's crazy. But as you can see, we're still getting 15 gallons per minute about 14.8 gallons per minute. 
So when you add up all the watt hours here, we'll get a total of 2.94 kilowatt hours of power consumption for this 24 hour schedule. Now, if you want to discuss the cost on that, you could calculate out each one using your variable rate for electricity, but the nationwide average for power consumption is about 13 cents per kilowatt hour. So we can do a quick calculation here, 2.94 times 13 cents. You're looking at about 38 cents per day, which is about $11.40 per month or about $136.80 per year. And that will, that's how we arrive at this filtration cost of approximately 38 cents per day for a very dynamic filtration schedule for a, you know, smaller swimming pool somewhere around the 10,000 gallon range. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.